Okay, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, how do we solve um, quadratics uh, using kind of all the methods that we've learned so far this year. Um, this, this video is going to be going over uh, the homework, which is the same as kind of the notes for today. Uh, we're not going to give you new homework for today, so you may want to kind of follow along with this um, on your own paper, because um, this will also be part of the homework that you're going to be turning in. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you, uh, but there is a key for you to be able to see uh, how to do at least all the problems. I will do um, some of them here, uh, so you will just want to follow along so that you can get some of your homework done too. Um, so, today we're going to be looking at kind of the different methods we've learned about solving uh, for uh, a equation that's quadratic. So, a quadratic equation is one that has an, a square in it, really. The, the square is what makes it quadratic, and in all of these we're going to be solving for x, okay? So, kind of the, the easiest method that we have when we're uh, trying to solve a quadratic is if you can factor it, okay? Um, and so we'll look at maybe at this example right here. We've got x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to zero, okay? And we wanna try and solve for x in this. Well, the first thing you should try when you see a quadratic is you should try and see uh, if you can factor it, okay? Now, it will only really factor, uh, at least we've only learned how to factor when there's a one in front of the x squared. You can actually factor it if there's uh, not a one in front of the x squared, but it's a little complicated and messy to do and we, we didn't learn how to do it. So this is only gonna work if there's a one in front of the x squared and if it does factor. So how do we tell if it can factor? Well. If you remember back to our factored form unit, the way that we check to see whether something can factor is we look for numbers that multiply to this number, the C. So this would be negative 12, multiply to negative 12, and add to negative 4, okay? That middle number right there, okay, in front of the X. Hopefully you can see those negatives. So we want numbers that multiply to negative 12 and that add to negative four, okay? So we wanna think what kind of numbers go into negative 12. Um, well, let's think about just numbers that go into 12 first. So we got like three and four go into 12 or, um, two and six go into 12, right? Two times six is 12. Um, we should think about, we want them to add together to be four, be negative four. So we should think about kind of how far apart these numbers are. So three and four are one apart, so that's not gonna work. Uh, let's try two and six. Two and six are four apart, so that seems like that might work. So we're gonna be using six and two probably. Okay, so six and two there. Now that doesn't give me the right sign over here though, right? Um, six and two does give me positive 12, but I need one of them to be negative, right? So which one should I have be negative for this to work? Well, I'm just gonna throw a negative in front of the six, right? Because negative six times two gives me negative 12. Negative six plus positive two is negative four, okay? So that gives me what I want. If I had put the negative in front of the two, I wouldn't have gotten negative four over here. I would have gotten positive four. So that's how we know we need to put it on the six, okay? So we have figured out um, how this factors, it's going to be x minus 6 and x plus 2, and this equals 0, okay? 
So this one did factor, right? We could factor it. And so we factored it like this. This is our factored form, what it looks like. X plus a number times X plus another number is equal to zero. So now to solve for X, this one is fairly simple to do, right? We just have to switch the signs on these numbers. So I do six and negative two would be the answers for this, right? Because when I plug in six into this, six minus six is zero times some other number, it doesn't matter, I'm going to get zero, right? So that will work. So these are our two solutions here, okay? So six and negative two. So we have those two solutions. Uh, that's how you could solve one that you can factor. It's, um, it's fairly simple, right? The hardest part is just figuring out what numbers multiply to this number and add to this number. Okay, so um, that's kind of the first method we can use. Another method we can use is we could take square roots, which is what we've been doing most recently. Um, if we want to take a square root to solve, it really needs to be in vertex form. Okay, and remember vertex form looks something like this. I'll just write it up here. Okay, it looks like, um, and I guess you can have a number out front here. Oh, my pen is dying. Okay, and so it would look something like this, where all the x's, notice all the x's in this are underneath the square, okay? So if you have something like that, you can solve it taking square roots. And that's where we move this over to the other side, this three over to the other side here. So I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. So we get x plus one squared is equal to negative three. Okay, x plus one squared is equal to negative three. We just subtracted the three. Then how do we solve for x in this? Well, I would like to get rid of that square because it's a little yucky, right? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to square root it. Okay, that gets rid of the square. So I'm gonna square root both sides. When I square root the square, those cancel out, right? So I just get x plus one. And notice whenever you do a square root on both sides, you have to throw in the plus or minus, right? So plus or minus square root of negative three. And so that got rid of the square, taking the square root. Now what I have to do is I just want to get x alone, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation to get rid of this 1 right here. So we're going to get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3. Okay. So that's our, uh, that would be our answer. Now, we did just barely learn about how to simplify radicals, how to simplify square roots. And um, so we should check, can I simplify this radical at all? Well, there's a negative under the square root. So if you remember, that's not going to be a real number. That's going to be imaginary. So I can pull out an i from that and just switch the sign under the square root. So this is gonna be an imaginary number, okay? And then I could try and simplify the square root of three. Um, it's not a, a, an integer number, it's not uh, just a nice number, uh, and nothing really goes into three, so that actually can't simplify anymore. So this would be our final answer here. So we haven't really seen before solving a quadratic where you get an imaginary number here, but it can happen when you take square roots, right? Because if you take a square root of a negative number, that's not a real number, that's imaginary, right? So that would be our answer there, okay? Um, 
So those are two methods you can use, right? You could factor it or you could uh, take a square root to be able to solve it. The last method that you could use is you could use the quadratic formula, okay? So notice like on this guy that we have here, x squared plus 6x plus 4, if I tried to factor this, okay, I would look for numbers that multiply to 4, sorry, and add to 6, right? Numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 6, okay? So I would look for numbers that do that. Well, what goes into four? There's two and two, right? So two plus two is not six, so that's not gonna work. Um, let's see, what else goes into six? Or sorry, into four. We've got one and four go into four, um, but then one plus four is five, not six. So this, this doesn't factor, okay? And notice that it's not it's not in vertex form either. It there's an x living outside of this square. So it doesn't factor. It's not in vertex form. So probably the way that we want to solve it is by using the quadratic formula. Now you could convert this to vertex form if you wanted to to solve for x, but um, that's usually a bit of work anyway, so um, we may as well just use the quadratic formula on it. So let's go through how we would use the quadratic formula. Well, we need to find A, B, and C. Hopefully you remember doing this before. This is our quadratic formula up here. So what is A in this case? It's the number in front of the square. So what's in front of the x squared? It is 1, right? There's 1x squared there, okay? And then what's the number in front of the x? It's 6, okay? And then what's the number just on its lonesome out here? That would be a 4, okay? So we got a equals 1, b equals 6, c equals 4. So what we're going to do here is plug that into our quadratic formula. So we get x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a, okay? So we're just plugging those in to our quadratic formula, okay? Maybe fix that a little bit. So we've got negative six plus or minus the square root of six squared minus four times a, which is one, times c is four, divided by two times a is one. Okay, so we plug that in, and then we just simplify it, right? So uh, negative six plus or minus, how do we simplify six squared in here? Well, six squared is 36. Okay, so 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 1 is 4, and then times another 4 is 16, divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So we do kind of all our multiplication first, and then we look at, um, we look at, solving, right, simplifying this a little bit more. So we've got negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 16. Well, that's 20, right? That's 20. And then we just divide by 2, okay? So um, let me straighten this a little bit. There we go. So we have... Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 divided by 2, okay? Now, you may be wondering, right, is there anything else we can do, that, do with this? Normally, what we did before was we plugged the square root of 20 uh, into the calculator so that we could see if that was a nice number, okay? So if I kind of do that, if I do the square root of... 20 here in the calculator. 
Okay, throw that in. We get a big nasty decimal. So we can't simplify the square root of 20 into a nice number, but we can check. Remember last time we learned how to how to simplify a square root. Um, we also learned about imaginary numbers, right? This one is an imaginary because it's a square root of a positive number, okay? So let's just review. How do I simplify the square root so that it looks a little bit better? Well, let's think about 20, right? We want to think of what numbers go into 20. Well, you could write it as 2 times 10, right? That's one that comes to mind. And then 10 is 2 times 5, okay? And then nothing goes into 2 and 5, right? So really what we figured out here is that 20 is just the product of the ends of these branches, right? It's 2 times 2 times 5 here. So 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, so that is uh, how you get 20. Notice there are two twos in this, right? There's a 2 squared living inside of 20. So we can take out that 2 from under the square root. We get negative 6 plus or minus 2, because we there's two twos, we can take one out, okay? And then what's left under the square root? Well, the thing that doesn't have a, a matching pair with it is this 5, so that stays under the square root, divided by 2 still, okay? So we get negative 6 plus or minus 2 square roots of 5 divided by 2, okay? Now there is one more thing you could do to simplify this. Um, I don't necessarily care if you do it uh, in general, but you could notice that there is a two on the denominator, right? And that goes evenly into negative six and it goes evenly into two here. So what you could do is you could divide the top and the bottom of your fraction by two and simplify it. So you get negative three plus or minus the square root of five. The twos would cancel from that part, right? So, but we do have to divide it out of both things, right? We can't, we can't just cancel out the two with the negative six and get a negative three there and still leave the two with the square root of five. We have to cancel it out of both, okay? So that's the simplest you could get with that one. Uh, I don't really care. You could stop right here. I'm okay with that. But generally, it is a little bit better if you can take it to this next step. So, but anyway, so that is how you can solve uh, some quadratic equations, right? There's different methods that you can do it, do it with, but... Um, some of them don't work in certain situations, right? Not all quadratics factor, like this one we figured out didn't factor, so we couldn't use factoring on it. Not all of them are in vertex form, right? You can convert any quadratic into vertex form, so you can, if you want to use the vertex form method all the time, that's okay, um, but it is a little tedious to have to convert to vertex form. So most of the time you just want to do this one if it is already in vertex form, okay? And then lastly, if, if nothing else is working, you can always use the quadratic formula. That will always work. You just have to kind of simplify it. And it's, it can be a bit messy. So I'm going to do just these two examples down here. And then I'll leave the rest for you to do on the homework. Um, you can also look at the key that I have on here so that uh, if you're confused, you can, you can check that. So we've got x squared plus 3x minus 28. This is equal to 0, okay? And we want to solve for x in this, okay? Well, notice there is a 1 in front of the x squared. Um, notice... The x's aren't all under the same square, so this isn't in vertex form, so we can't use the, the second method we learned.
But what we could do is we could try and factor it, right? So let's try factoring first. So we want numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to positive 3. All right, that's what we want. Okay, so let's think about numbers that go into negative 28, right? What numbers would go into negative 28? Well, there's like 2 and 14. Those aren't 3 apart, so that won't really help us. Um, what else goes into 28? There's like 4 and 7. Notice those ones are 3 apart. Um, and if we add them, we don't quite get what we want. But uh, if we were to subtract them, we would get a 3. So let's try like 7 and 4. Okay, let's try 7 and 4 here. 7 times 4 gives me positive 28, not negative 28. So one of these numbers needs to be negative. And then 7 plus 4 doesn't give me 3. But if I had a negative on one of them, it might work, right? So if I had 7 plus uh, 4, how could I get that to be 3? Which one should I make be negative? I'm going to put the negative on the 4, right? 7 plus negative 4, that is positive 3. Okay? And then I have to do that on the other one too, right? 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. So that will give us the right answer. Okay? So let's go ahead and do this. This would factor as x plus 7 and x minus 4. So it does factor, okay, which is nice. So then what are our solutions going to be? We just switch the signs on these numbers, right? So negative 7 and positive 4 would be our answer there, okay? Okay, um, so hopefully that helps with that. Um, now let's look at something like this, where we've got x squared plus 12 is equal to 0, okay? Well, you'll notice... You could try and factor this if you wanted to. That would be okay. Um, so let's start with that. Numbers that multiply to 12. Notice that there's not a number in the middle here. There's no x's just in the middle. So you would add to 0. So you want numbers that multiply to 12, add to 0. Well, let's see. What goes into 12? There's like 3 and 4. That won't add to 0. Um, 1 and 12. Um, 2 and 6. None of those are going to add to 0. So this one actually doesn't factor. So let's try method 2. Is this in vertex form so that I can solve by taking a square root? Well, notice all of the x's are underneath the same square, right? There's just an x squared here. So all of the x's are underneath the same square, so that means I can just solve by taking a square root. So let's go ahead and solve just algebraically. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So we get x squared is negative 12. Okay, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And then how do I get rid of that square so I get x alone? Well, we just square root. So we get x is plus or minus the square root of negative 12, okay? So now that we have that, we could think about simplifying this. The square root of 12 is going to be slightly nasty, I think. We could throw it in the calculator to see. Um, but when I do the square root of positive 12, I get like 3.46, so that's going to be nasty. Now notice where it's a negative under there, what type of number is this? This is an imaginary number, right? So it's going to be i plus or minus i times the square root of positive 12. Okay, we can move that negative out and turn it into an i. Okay. So the last thing we should do is just check, can I simplify that square root of 12 anymore? Well, let's split it up into its factors and see what happens. So 12 is 3 times 4, and then we could split 4 up into two twos. 
So all together we get 12 is three times two times two, right? Just these edges, okay? So that's what 12 is in its prime factorization, right? These are prime numbers, nothing else goes into them, okay? So what can we do? Well, notice there's two twos in this. So I can take out a two from the square root and then there's not a pair to go with the three. So it's going to stay underneath the square root like so, okay? So we get plus or minus i times two times the square root of three, okay? And that would be our answer. So, the only thing new that we're really doing today is looking at solving quadratics and then really simplifying down our square roots, right? Um, a lot of the times when you solve a square root, you'll get um, a, a square root um, in there. When you solve a quadratic, you'll get a square root. And so you can simplify that square root kind of using the stuff that we just talked about um, last time. So that's really the, the only new thing we're doing today. Um, it's just, it is, it can be hard to decide what method to use to solve these quadratics, but you just kind of want to look for, right, for factoring, you want to make sure that there is a one in front of the x squared then you can try and factor. If it doesn't factor, you'll have to use one of the other methods, right? To use it in vertex form, it needs to have all the x's underneath the same square. And then lastly, if none of that stuff works, if factoring or, um, or vertex form, is, it's not in vertex form, you usually want to use just the quadratic formula, okay? So hopefully that helps for today. Um, this has been Mr. Green. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a good one. Stay safe out there. Um, we will see you later.